So earlier this year, I did this video on Silvergate that you should really check out. It's titled Crypto Endgame because Silvergate is one of the on-ramps for a lot of crypto exchanges. What I mean for that is that, you know, when you go in and try to deposit fiat money to something like Coinbase or Kraken, and one thing you might never ask is where does that money actually go? Well, they actually go to banks like Silvergate and Signature. We also did a video on Signature. But the problem with these banks is now that they're in, we're in crypto winter, they are running into a lot of problems of customer withdrawals. So what's happening right now, what we know about Silvergate is that they suffered a net loss of $1 billion as well as a decline in deposits of customer deposits of up to $14 billion in the last quarter of 2022. They're also hit with a class action lawsuit due to their involvement with the FTX fallout, alleging that they have been aiding FTX's fraudulent activities in December. So the thing is here is that apparently Silvergate helped FTX, whereas when a customer of FTX deposited money thinking that their money was going into an FTX bank's account, what Silvergate actually did was they resent the money, not to FTX's bank account, but to their sister company's Alameda Research's bank account. And this is fraudulent. Right now, 71% of their shares are currently being shorted, and Silvergate had to sell investment securities beyond what was anticipated and took on further debt securities in January and February 2023, which Silvergate expects further losses. So the situation right now, guys, is bad. So for most banks around the world, in order to legally operate, you actually have to fulfill capital requirements. We talked about this before if you've been following this channel. One of them is called Basel requirements, which basically tells us that you have to have a certain amount of highly liquid assets compared to the amount of outflows that are coming out of your bank. And the losses that Silvergate has been packing will likely negatively impact these capital ratios. Regulated banks have to have this requirement met. And with the things that are going on with Silvergate, they might not meet this requirement. They might not fulfill this ratio. And this sort of stuff does not happen every day. So guys, I'm taking a look at Silvergate stock here. And over here in November 2021, they were selling at around $230. That's their all-time high. And their drop has been precipitous. I mean, they traded as low as $4.85, which came in last week. And that's a 98% drop from its all-time highs from 2021. What we're seeing right now is Coinbase, Crypto.com, Gemini, Bitstamp, Circle, Paxos. They are all backing away from Silvergate, whereas before they were using Silvergate as the on-ramp bank. Ledger X and Bitstamp themselves are switching over to Signature Bank, which I believe is not as good of a move because Signature and Silvergate are kind of in the same position. And when Silvergate falls, who might knows that signature might fall as well. Gemini themselves has mentioned that they have zero customer funds and zero GUSD in Silvergate. So there's nothing to worry about there. It's business as usual for them. So my advice right now is really to watch out. You know, Silvergate and Signature are two of the biggest banks that crypto firms uses as an on-ramp. Without them, you won't actually be able to buy your crypto easily with your fiat currency. And to be quite frank, if either of them folds, then we would actually be quite screwed. And if you want to know what to do when that happens, then your best thing to do right now is actually to go tap that subscribe button, which actually costs you nothing. Because what's happening is, well, for me personally, I really believe in opting out of our current traditional finance TradFi financial system. So we need an on-ramp in order to move fiat into Bitcoin. And currently, Silvergate and Signature serves that purpose. But the question is, what happens if they're not here? anymore then we'll have to find new ones because right now it's still basically not safe to keep your money in a bank right we live in a fiat ponzi financial system it's just not safe and if we take a look at silvergate what is happening over there they might get bankrupt and they're a bank and that is highly risky right now and there's no way that i can say that this might not happen to our usual bank like chibi morgan and chase and Wells Fargo and Bank of America and etc. Here we are looking at Bitcoin because Bitcoin and Ethereum did drop due to the news right now with Silvergate, 
but I am really looking to buy Bitcoin right now. And what I have here is some technical analysis, drew up some charts. Basically, what I'm looking at is 21,800. I have set a buy limit there to buy $750 worth of Bitcoin at 21,800. And I have also set another order to buy at 21,200. If it falls like crazy all of a sudden, then I really feel like 21,200, 21,300 would be a strong support point for it to go bounce and shoot back up again. So really, this is my my way of dollar cost averaging when you know how to read the charts right and remember none of this is financial advice and i do support the dollar cost averaging you know buying let's say 250 dollars worth of bitcoin every single week that is a very good strategy to average out for you to get the best price i just do it this way because i prefer to use technical analysis to support my buying decisions of knowing when to buy and when the news is bad and everybody is freaking out that is when it's usually the best time to buy in dollar cost average and use technical classes and Fibonacci's to support all right what price points are potentially going to be the dip and potentially be the best points to dollar cost average and that is what I did with you just now other than that guys that's really all I have for today for this news with Silvergate like I said before it is best for you to keep as little money as possible in any of those crypto firms because we don't know of their banking relationships with any of these other banks that might be going through the same thing as Silvergate and Signature and remember guys to get your crypto off the exchanges and put them in a ledger it's the safest place to be right now and you can get that in the pin comment below and if you guys are really really worried know that a lot of these crypto firms don't just have Silvergate and Signature as their only banking partners it's best to go search up you know crypto firm banking partners like Kraken banking partners and you'll likely find a page that shows all the banking partners they use with the currencies that they use. Other than that, guys, that's all I have for today. Please be sure to smash that like and subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm. Check out our other videos on cryptocurrencies and passive income. And remember, guys, continue working, continue building, continue inspiring. See you next time.